Greetings, members of the Select and Standing Committee on Finance. The 2023 budget tabled by Finance Minister Enoch Godongwana breaks promises made by President Ramaphosa in his sauna. This budget leaves millions behind in poverty by keeping the rich rich and the poor poor. Our biggest issue with this budget is that it does not cater for the poor majority and instead provides relief for the rich. As an organization with a constituency of nearly a million people, the majority living in low-income backgrounds, we have constantly made our demands clear with proposals on how to find revenue to help lift millions out of poverty by taxing the rich more. Our campaign to tax the rich has mass support. We also know for a fact that there are people willing to pay a little more tax to contribute towards the distribution of wealth. Hi, this is Estelle. I want the Finance Committee to know that I think this budget entrenches inequality. I pay 7,000 rand a month in personal income tax, and I support paying more tax to do my part to improve people's well-being, health and education. Our campaign called for an increase of personal income tax on those earning over 1 million rand. It happens that each committee member here knows very well what paying a bit more tax would mean since each of you earn a salary of over 1 million rand. Would any committee member here go to bed hungry if they paid a bit more tax? The finance minister believes you can't afford to pay a bit more tax, but where is the evidence? Do you even know how much a loaf of bread costs? I pay nine rand for the bread of all the old bread. It's going up, it's going up. The bread price is going up all the time. It's going up. It's too much expensive. Bro. It's too expensive. Buy it here. I pay so that's what I'm not I haven't a clue. I just buy bread because we need it. <laughs> I really haven't a clue what the bread price is. I think it's about five or six rand. I'm not sure. <laughs> A loaf of bread at the moment, that is a good question. <laughs> Cost wise? Gosh, I have no idea. The clip you just watched is about 10 years old from a documentary called Crumbs, which is about how food companies like Tiger Brands and Pioneer Foods colluded to increase the price of bread. At the moment, a loaf of bread costs around 15 rand. The point is, extreme inequality in our country requires real action. For the sake of making sure people can live with dignity, would taxing the rich more be that devastating? The fact that people were cheering when the finance minister announced that there won't be an increase in taxes on those who can afford to pay more tax is concerning. There is a cost of living crisis for the poor majority. There is a health crisis and an education crisis. Yet there was that celebration. We hear stories of how mothers won't eat so there is enough food for their children because the child support grant is not enough. But it appears the finance minister and treasury were more concerned about the impact of tax on those who love their Norwegian salmon from Woolworths. Salmon that costs nearly as much as the 350 grant someone has to survive on for a whole month. President Ramaphosa claims a basic income grant is being worked on. To turn the 350 SRD grant into a basic income grant, surely it is worth paying a bit more tax. Even if it means instead of that BMW that costs 2 million rands, someone has to settle for a Toyota Corolla. Is that too much to ask for? Honourable members, we are not economists nor experts, but there is research and proposals on how to implement a wealth tax. The Davis Tax Committee recommended gathering data on assets and liabilities, which SARS has already started. This data can be used to design and implement a wealth tax, which could help increase social grants and help fund the basic income grant. I am pleading to Minister Godongwana to please fight corruption, increase the tax of the rich, give more than 250 to all caregivers. The Minister, I would like to appeal to you, tax the rich people so that we, our money could be increased. Mr. Minister, we live in such poor living conditions. We don't, that money is not barely enough for us to carry us through the month. And while the budget was being tabled, here's what it sounded like to millions who live in poverty. We know President Ramaphosa made promises, but unfortunately, we cannot keep them for you. 
Even with the rising inflation, price hikes, expensive food and medical health care, taxpayers who include rich people and big businesses cannot pay any more money. The 350 grant remains as it is and unfortunately, even though the president said it would be used as a basis for the basic income grant, we don't have any plans to allocate budget for that. The decreased budget for the 350 grant says, Oh, if you are poor, sorry, we can't get any more money to help you. If you are wealthy enough to afford solar electricity systems of up to 15,000 rand, we as a government are very happy to subsidize you. If you can't, oh well then, tough, have fun in the dark. And the basic income grant? There are many other progressive tax interventions that year on year, Treasury and the Finance Minister fail to implement. For example, a resource rent tax on mining companies would help fund things such as the basic income grant. Treasury and the Finance Minister appear to view big businesses as our nation's saviors. There's job creation which is important, but their purpose is to maximize profits at all costs. Let us not forget that for years, mobile networks charged low-income consumers more per megabyte of data than rich consumers. Mobile networks essentially profited while helping to exclude people from accessing the internet, which is a powerful tool for education, job creation, and starting a business. Again, this budget fundamentally fails to effectively tax the immense wealth and profits in our country. We call on this committee to compel the Finance Minister, Treasury, and SAS to provide the research, data, and analysis that informed their decision not to increase taxes on the rich, so that there would be less money to address the cost of the living crisis impacting the poor majority, and not cutting spending on health, education, and so on. We acknowledge the hard work of SARS to turn things around and improve compliance, including targeting offshore revenue estimated at $400 billion. More must be done to help SARS continue the important work to address non-compliance, but also illicit financial flows. Let us not forget that the Paradise Papers revealed more than 500 South African individuals and companies who use loopholes to avoid paying their fair share of tax. Honourable members, while an additional 30 billion rands allocation for social grants may seem like a lot of money, food inflation basically cancels these social grant increases. The budget cut for the 350 grant will see a million people excluded from the grant. A 90 rands increase on the old age grant may sound like a lot of money to you, but for pensioners who are heading households and have to provide for financial support for their children and grandchildren, the new old age amount is still not enough. Pensioners have made their demand to increase this grant to 2,500 rands and give them a 13th check, but this continues to be a pipe dream for them as they struggle to put food on the table. This is Tandi. She went grocery shopping for her two children with the child grant support money. Out of everything she needed, she had to choose one over the other because the money was simply not enough. On top of that, she still has to get her kids to school and get them other basic necessities. The groceries she bought would not even last for two weeks. Now imagine what happens to a pensioner who has to take care of an entire household with her grant money. Honorable members, this budget fails to help the poor majority find or create jobs because it fails to increase taxes on those who can afford to pay more. All of your political parties have made countless promises about creating jobs. But increasing social grants significantly and introducing a basic income grant would help millions travel to job interviews or start their own businesses. Social grants help local and informal economies in low-income communities. This is not a budget that this country should be proud of. Honorable members, as elected officials, if you think the majority of the electorate supports this budget, you are in for the shock of your lives next year.